Okay then, you anatomy faithful who are after some facts and not just the crazy jibber-jabber that seems to be taking over the world. How are we living in a world where the word fact has been sullied and doesn't seem to mean what it used to mean a few years ago? Anyway, ophthalmic artery. There's a lot of anatomy in the eye. We're doing an eye week, so I'm still locked at home because of the COVID isolation, right? So I don't know how I'm gonna illustrate this. Normally it would be skulls and pipe cleaners and that sort of thing. Today I'm gonna have to use my imagination and whatever images I can find and I don't know, I'll work it out. Um, but we're doing uh, the eye and there's a little bit of gap in the teaching that I'm doing for the online teaching for the students that actually can't go to the university because none of us are allowed in there and blah, blah, blah ophthalmic artery so we're going to look at the ophthalmic artery where it comes from where it goes to it has a whole bunch of branches that you don't need to know in massive detail generally but some of them are shockingly important if you just want the short version i've got the short version for you um first of all note the spelling o-p-h-t-h ophthalmic um, it is spelled so wrongly, so commonly, that if you Google search ophthalmic without that H, you'll get about 50-50, you'll get about the same number of results back. I even spell ophthalmic wrong in, I think, a web app of the skull, and I still haven't fixed it yet, which is an ode to procrastination. Um, the ophthalmic artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery in the middle cranial fossa inside the cranial cavity. Now the internal carotid artery runs in a perfect position just posterior to the orbit, just on the other side of the bone there. So the ophthalmic artery jumps off, dives through the optic canal, through that canal, and what else is in the optic canal? The optic nerve. Uh, so it runs through there and then gives off a whole bunch of branches to supply blood to the structures of the orbit and the face. Now we've talked about the blood supply of the face before, so we better overlap with that. Um, it supplies blood to the retina, to the structures of the eyeball, to the extraocular muscles, to the intraocular muscles. It just supplies blood to all of the orbit stuff. There is a little bit of overlap with the artery of the face. Um, but that's it. Well, no, no, that's not it. Um, the most important branch is the central retinal artery that supplies blood to the retina. That's it. That's your short version. I still managed to get some waffling in there, didn't I? Well done, me. But there's more to it than that. And there is some really funky stuff going on here. Um, so if you want to hang around for, eh, I wouldn't say the full truth, but a lot more truth, <laughs> then uh, I'll slow down and we'll work our way through it. Okay, in the neck, the common carotid artery runs up on either side. We have left and right ones. And as they reach about the level of the jaw, you know, around the thyroid cartilage, they split into internal and external carotid arteries. The internal carotid artery is gonna go into the skull. So it's gonna pass through the carotid canal and it's gonna be one of the arteries on either side that supplies blood to the structures inside the cranial cavity, most notably the Brian. Um, the external carotid artery is going to supply blood to the face and we've talked about the blood supply to the face before and that's well worth considering because we're gonna see some overlap. I could probably put a link to it somewhere couldn't I, if I can remember to do that. And the external carotid artery then its major branch is the maxillary artery which runs in the deep face and gives off a whole bunch of interesting arteries such as the middle meningeal artery that we've talked about before. Okay. So the common carotid artery becomes the internal carotid artery which runs into the carotid canal and as it runs in it does this it makes this S shape right it's really cool Whoop. and in doing that it runs anteriorly and superiorly and it's that movement that brings it posterior to the orbit and puts it in that perfect position to supply blood to the structures of the eye um, and the structures of the orbit. Now the internal carotid artery ends right where kind of the bone ends. So it, um, what have we got there? We've got the, um, the clevis is the bony slope and the little processes are the clenoid processes and they make that shape there and that curve is there because the internal carotid artery is running within that curve. The, the arteries and the bones form together so their shapes dictate each other's shapes. 
the internal carotid artery ends then as the middle cerebral artery and really gives off the anterior cerebral artery. So this is why um, clots get thrown up into the middle cerebral artery most often because it's a direct line, it's the easiest line for the, the clot to take, causing a stroke. But just before the internal carotid artery ends, the ophthalmic artery branches from it. Now we've got two ways of getting from that middle cranial fossa, from the cranial cavity into the orbit. We can either go through the superior orbital fissure, and a lot of structures do go through there, a lot of nerves, or we can go through the optic canal. And the optic canal is a nice round tube because the major structure passing through there is the optic nerve, carrying all sensory information from the retina back to the brain. Um, and the ophthalmic artery runs with the optic nerve to get into the orbit. Now, once it gets into the orbit, or as it's getting into the orbit, it's going to give off a whole bunch of different branches. And if you look at a table in a textbook, or you look at a diagram, it seems really complicated and confusing. But really, there are just a handful of... Well, there's probably a couple of concepts you really need to know, and then just a handful of ideas about the other branches. So if we go straight in with the headline news, the central retinal artery, or the central artery of the retina, the central retinal artery is, is one of the first branches, the branches from the ophthalmic artery. And the central retinal artery is going to run with the optic nerve to get into the eyeball, to get into the eye. Um, and so if you're looking at, I don't, I don't think we'll be able to get an image of this, but if you're looking at the retina and you see the optic disc, so where the... Uh, where the optic nerve comes in, and you see those blood vessels branching from it, that's the central retinal artery entering the eye and spreading out. It is the only artery that supplies blood to the deep layers of the retina. So by the deep layers of the retina, I mean the layers closest to the center of the sphere, the center of the eyeball. Um, it also supplies blood to the neurons running to the retina, running from the retina back to the brain. It is not a big blood vessel. And there is almost no redundancy. There is almost, there are anastomoses with other blood vessels, but they are small, ineffective. They're, to all intents and purposes, not useful. So what are the other blood vessels then? Well we have um, ciliary arteries and we have long and short posterior ciliary arteries and anterior ciliary arteries and there is usually more than one of each and the number is variable. Right let's go to the lab and use their whiteboard. How do we do this? Nobody ever wipes off the whiteboard. You always gotta... Okay so we've got the optic nerve, optic nerve and then the eyeball running around here with the retina on the internal surface as it were. We've got the internal carotid artery running up here inside the cranial cavity very close by and as the internal carotid artery runs near to the optic nerve it's going to give off the ophthalmic artery. So the ophthalmic artery is going to run with the optic nerve into the, into the orbit and it's going to give off a number of branches. Now, let's say that this guy is going to continue off here and do something and, I don't know, we're going to have another artery that's going to branch off there and do something. Here, here is the central retinal artery running with the optic nerve and it's going to give off branches to the retina, particularly to the deep parts of the retina. So that's the central retinal artery. Now the other arteries supplying the eyeball are going to be ciliary arteries. And we have a set of posterior ciliary arteries and some anterior ciliary arteries. So the posterior ciliary arteries, um, we have some short ones. So these, and we might have a few of them or several of them, and the short ciliary arteries are going to run to, you know, the, the, the other surfaces of the eyeball, so the outer parts. 
So these would be short posterior ciliary arteries. And the long posterior ciliary arteries will run further. So they'll run around towards the anterior part of the eyeball. And then this artery that's running past here is going to go off and do other things. That's going to give off some anterior ciliary arteries that will probably link up an anastomose with the long posterior ciliary arteries. So we've got, so when we're talking about the eyeball, we've got the, the central retinal artery, short posterior ciliary arteries, long posterior ciliary arteries because they're coming from posterior and then anterior ciliary arteries that may join with the long posterior ciliary arteries. But these ciliary arteries are supplying blood to the structures of the eyeball. So if you if you look at the various eyeball videos that I've done so we're talking about, you know, the uh, the other layers of the retina. Um, we're talking about the sclera, you know, the connective tissues of the eyeball. We're talking about the little muscles, the intraocular muscles. We're talking about all those structures of the eyeball receive little branches from those various long and short posterior ciliary arteries and anterior ciliary arteries. Bit of Latin, uh, cilia, means uh, eyelashes. Latin. That's also all these ciliary things we we talk about. Eyelashes, eyes. Uh, mm. Now, some of those posterior ciliary arteries will supply blood to other layers of the retina and are likely to anastomose with the central retinal artery. But if the central retinal artery becomes occluded, they seem to have almost no effect, which is why I say that the central retinal artery has no redundancy. It has no backup. It's this little blood vessel, and it's the only little blood vessel that can do what it does. And we do see another other anastomoses and um, other links between blood vessels in the body, which also, you know, seem like a good idea, but don't function when they really need to. So, you know. So what happens if the central retinal artery is occluded? Um, usually sudden, painless, loss of vision in one eye. In that eye because it's a blood vessel thing right so it's just going to affect that side um, it is an ophthalmic emergency um, if that central retinal artery is occluded there can be irreversible damage of the neural tissues in minutes you know tens of minutes and it depends on a number of biological factors but it also depends on whether it's a, f a complete occlusion or a partial occlusion the most common cause of um, occlusion is atherosclerosis in the, probably in the internal carotid artery, maybe from the common carotid artery. So throwing off, you know, um, clots, lumps, uh, masses that then pass into the central retinal artery and occlude it. I said, it's not a big artery. Um, so cardiovascular health is important for your eyes for this reason. Okay, other branches, right, well medially, what have we got medially? We've got the ethmoid bone, so there are anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries which kind of run towards the air sacs, the sinuses of the ethmoid bone. There is the nose, <laughs> so we've got the, uh, the, the dorsal nasal artery, which is, which is going to run, it's actually going to supply kind of skin to the, 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 the region of the nose around here. Oh, do you remember when we were looking at the arteries of the face, how we got up here and we said that there was a link to other blood vessels? That's where the link is. Um, there is the, okay, so there are supraorbital and supratrochlear arteries. So um, the trochlea, what are we talking about there? The superior oblique muscle runs with that pulley, doesn't it? It has a tendinous pulley, the trochlea. So the supratrochlear artery runs superior to the trochlea and the supraorbital artery runs through the superior part of the orbit. It's going to run through the supraorbital foramen or notch um, in the skull here. So the supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries are going to run to the super, through the superior part of the orbit 
and then they're actually going to run and they're going to supply blood to the forehead to this part of the face up here and then over here we've got uh, the lacrimal artery so the lacrimal gland is up here and tears kind of run across the eye like this so the lacrimal artery is going to run laterally and it's going to run out to supply blood to the structures like the lacrimal gland the conjunctiva the uh, you know the upper eyelid and the skin around here and that sort of thing and then we've got oh zygomatic bone haven't we so we've got the zygomatico temporal and zygomatical facial arteries that kind of run out towards this region here so the blood vessels oh and of course there are as those arteries run through the orbit they're going to give off other branches to the various extraocular muscles within the orbit the muscles that move the eyes around right so this artery here then is going to be the lacrimal artery It's a mess. It would be a similar mess if I used an actual whiteboard, except the lighting would probably be worse. The ophthalmic artery is going to supply blood to the eyeball, to the structures of the orbit, and to the skin of the forehead and the, the skin and structures around the eye. Okay, that's the normal situation. That's, that's kind of the layout that most people have, and there's a bit of a variability there, and a bit of variety. Should we move on to the mad stuff? <laughs> right. Now, I said that the external carotid artery gives off the maxillary artery, which is the artery of the deep face. And one of the branches of the maxillary artery is the middle meningeal artery, which comes up um, time and time again. Now, the middle meningeal artery runs through foramen spinosum, little little hole in the cranial floor to get inside the cranial cavity. Now the middle meningeal artery is going to supply blood to the, the meninges, the dura mater, but also to the bone, right? Um, but can, what, what's that bird got in its jackdaws are nesting? Um, but consider how close the middle meningeal artery is to the orbit and the ophthalmic artery and the internal carotid artery. And during development, all of those blood vessels and the development of the orbit were closely related. If you think about how blood vessels develop and grow and send off branches and what have you, those things were really closely tied together. Which means that in some people, in fact, I think in maybe most people, there are anastomoses, links, between the ophthalmic artery and the middle meningeal artery in some way passing through some bony structures but better than that in some people the ophthalmic artery can actually be a branch of the middle meningeal artery which would mean that the ophthalmic artery and the entire blood su supply to the eye and the orbit actually comes from the external carotid artery which means then you need to think about disease of the external carotid artery and effect on vision in some people and in some cases then the middle meningeal artery might be a branch of the ophthalmic artery or there might be some other strange branching things you know the um the ophthalmic artery might branch from other parts of the internal carotid artery as i said it continues to become the middle cerebral artery and anterior cerebral arteries and things like that what i'm saying is this is why we we word anatomy spotter questions really carefully so in most cases the ophthalmic artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery directly but in some cases and this is important clinically right if you're thinking about um doing things with the external carotid artery uh, anyway if you think yeah in some cases the ophthalmic artery can branch from the middle meningeal artery from the external carotid artery which is a lovely bit of crazy madness and shows how biologically we're all nice and weird and different and lovely it's good isn't it anyway focus on the normal don't forget the unusual because you will come across people who are unusual <laughs> yeah well you know anyway <laughs> right i think that's it that's the ophthalmic artery, where it comes from, its main branches, what it does, where it goes to. Job done, right? Okay. 
Um, yeah, go and have a look at, if you want to know more, go and have a look at the uh, blood supply um, of the face and the venous drainage of the face as well, because you'll see how that relates to the eyeball. All right, see you next time.